common sense says yes and a few say no. Since the year of existence of mankind, the believers have been challenged about the existence of God. The main argument of the non-believers has always been that there are no evidences to prove that God does exist. However, here we provide certain rational thoughts and facts to give a much different perspective of the subject. When we come across a painting such as Mona Lisa, definitely we inquire about the painter Leonardo da Vinci. Many such man-made wonders do exist. To name a few, the Taj Mahal, India, the Palm Jumeirah, Dubai, Dreamliner, Boeing 787, International Space Station Hotel, Oasis of the Seas, Burj Khalif, Cars, Robos, Phones. The list is unending. There is definitely the intelligence of some intelligent being or beings involved behind such creations. So, who has created what we have not created? Such as the human eye. The human eye is among the most complex organs in our body. It perceives 7 to 10 million colors through a synaptic flash, that is, one tenth of a second. Who is the designer and creator of the human eye? And also of many other remarkably wonderful things, such as Complex design points to deliberate designer. Modern scientific research shows that the amount of fine tuning of the universe is considerably surprising. The particularity of the details quite vividly points to an intelligent designer. Let's see some of the examples. First, speed of Earth's rotation. If the Earth rotates too quickly, we'll have too many storms like tornadoes and hurricanes. And if it rotates too slowly, it will be too cold at night and too hot during the day. Did the planet Earth learn on itself about its perfect speed? Or is it being monitored just like a satellite is monitored by hundreds of scientists together? Second, size of Earth. The Earth's size and its corresponding gravity holds a thin layer of mostly nitrogen and oxygen gases, only extending about 50 miles above the Earth's surface. If Earth was smaller, an atmosphere would be impossible. If Earth were larger, its atmosphere would contain free hydrogen which would make life impossible. Who gave it the perfect size? Third, location of Earth. Although it revolves around at a tremendous speed of nearly 67,000 miles per hour, it manages to maintain its position at the exact distance. Furthermore, it's found that if the Earth were any further away from the Sun, we would all freeze. Any closer and we would burn. Who thus pinned the planet Earth at the exact fitting distance from the Sun? And that's just about one planet Earth in a huge universe. Similar observations have been recorded by the scientists 
for other such massive bodies who finally designed the entire planetary systems. Some of the scientists may say it just happened by chance. Does that sound like science then? Any sane man endowed with reason would question about the designer when he sees a good design. So in the similar spirits, we should inquire where does the fine-tuned design of the universe come from? Order in the universe implies a smart organizer. When we reflect upon the nature of our world, we see order everywhere. The more we discover about the universe, the more we find that is governed by rational laws. With our apt intelligence, we are trying to come up with the concept of symbiotic factory. Symbiotic factory refers to a system in which the waste of one factory, say A, is completely utilized by another factory, say B, as its resource or raw material and the waste of factory B is completely utilized by factory A as its resource. Such a concept sounds ecologically brilliant and economically smart as a whip. However, it inevitably remains theoretical. But to the much of our surprise, such symbiotic factories do exist in the universe. One such arrangement is the cycle of respiration and photosynthesis. At every moment, we breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide, which is taken in by plants, which continue to give out oxygen. Oxygen is life-sustaining and carbon dioxide is life-destroying, if present in excessive quantity. There is a magnificent balance system in nature, which exactly takes in the waste product of respiration carbon dioxide and gives out the raw material for respiration, oxygen, through the process of photosynthesis. Can the best of the scientists make such a symbiotic factory setup, where waste product of one factory completely acts as the raw material for the other and vice versa? Now, since the universe has order and is governed by the laws of science, we should question how this order came about. Shouldn't there be an organizer behind all these complex arrangements in the nature? Speaking about the laws, Uniform laws of nature connotes an intelligent lawmaker. Much of life may seem uncertain, but look at what we can count on day after day. Gravity remains constant. A hot cup of coffee left on a counter will get cold and the earth rotates the same in 24 hours. How is that we can identify laws of nature that never change? Why is the universe so orderly, so reliable? The great scientists believe there are no logical necessities for a universe that obeys rules, let alone one that abides by the rules of mathematics. It is easy for them to imagine a universe in which conditions unpredictably change instant to instant. Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winner for quantum electrodynamics, said, Why nature is mathematical is a mystery. The fact that there are rules at all is a kind of miracle. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't have any experience of a law which has not been made by someone. The forming of every single law and its enforcement is always governed by an intelligent person. So it's truly rational to infer that the universal laws and their strict enforcement imply the existence of a lawmaker. A creation undisputedly implies a creator. Now, if there is a designer, there is an organizer, there is a lawmaker, then definitely when we see the entire universe, we can infer that there is a creator. When even a paper rose flower needs a creator, then how can the real rose flower be created by no one? Many even say that the nature is working automatically, thus denying the need of creator. They argue that seeing any divinity 
a god controlling nature is just a sentimental longing coming from an unscientific mentality so does nature work automatically the word automatically used in this context is somewhat misleading because automatically doesn't indicate the absence of a controller but rather the absence of knowledge of the controller when we say that a machine works automatically what it means is that the machine doesn't require continuous interaction with the operator but still there is a operator who activates the machine and monitors its working for example a child may be astounded by looking at a toy moving automatically but a wise person will never be misled into the same conclusion as the inexperienced child Similarly the magnificent phenomena in nature are not occurring by themselves as someone may imagine like the naive child all natural phenomena are working under the expert though remote and therefore invisible programming of god as has been the conclusion throughout history of many wise people both religious and scientific thus it is that the famous physicist lord kelvin asserted if you think deeply enough you will be forced by science to believe in god max planck the originator of quantum theory remarked for religion god is at the beginning for science god is at the end in vedanta sutra the concise summary of the vedic literatures we find similar conclusions janma dyasya yataha god or absolute truth brahman is the source of everything likewise lord krishna speaks in bhagavad gita that he the supreme absolute truth is the source of all worlds and everything emanates from him aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate